Now, over on page 348, there's this exemption that they have put in place. And it's not really an exemption. It's called the Housings for Older People, HOPA. Because if you recall, age is the most discriminated classification we use to this day, right? You got to be 16 to drive. You got to be 18 to vote. You got to be 21 to drink. You got to be 55 to get the really good menu at Denny's. All right. So age is one that we do discriminate on. But there is this thing called housings for older people, or you've heard them called the 55 plus communities, where you have to be 55 plus to live in the property, or 80% of the population living there has to be 55 plus. Well, in order to avoid the fact that people can claim discrimination, they created this HOPA, which says, yes, we can have these housings of over 55 plus, and it's not because it's an exemption to the fair housing. We had a lady that called us and said, hey, I want to file a, a lawsuit. My HOA would not allow my son to move in with me, and I think that's a violation of the fair housing under the family status. So we started talking and come to find out she lives in what's called a cardinal community. Cardinal is a local builder around here that builds the over 55 housing. And I said, no, wait a minute, how old's your son? And they said, well, he's 30. That's the reason he can't move in. It's not that they are discriminating familia, familia, family, because your son, they are discriminating because under the HOPA Act, they can deny people under the age of 55. All right, so HOPA is the housing for older people, which allows them to have a community of 55 or older without it being called some discriminatory act. All right, it's, it's age-based, and age is one that we typically have. Now, let's talk about some definitions because I wanna make sure that we're all in the same boat when we talk about these housing laws. So let's talk about what a house is or a dwelling. HUD, the Department of uh, yeah, Housing and Urban Development, which runs the fair housing, all right? HUD is the department that oversees the Fair Housing Act. They have some definitions that strictly apply. So for it to be called a house or a dwelling, that is any but building that is built for human occupancy. Single family home, an apartment, a condo, things of that nature. Or any vacant land that is intended to have one of those built on it. That's a key, key, key exception. So if you're selling a vacant lot inside of a housing addition, you would look at it and go, well, there's no house on it, but it's still subject to fair housing because the intention is to have a house built on that lot. So it still would be governed by the fair housing laws, even though there's really technically no structure standing on it. So if you notice what it doesn't include then is like farmland, commercial property. Those are not houses by definition and therefore the Fair Housing Act does not apply to some of those types of properties. If you're selling a recreational property out in Brown County, 35 acres for a hunting, fair housing may not apply to that because it's not by definition a house. It's recreational vacant land not intended to be built on, okay? What is a family? There is a definite definition for a family. And here's something I can't believe no politician has ever jumped on, all right? A family is defined as one or more people under the age of 18 living together. 
This includes a female who is pregnant. A pregnant female is protected as a family under the Fair Housing Act. So in essence, HUD, a department of the government, has literally decided when life begins because a pregnant female gets a family protection. All right. So that's what family means. Now, disability, a disability is defined by HUD as any physical or mental impairment that limits the quality of life. All right. Any physical or mental disability or impairment that substantially limits the quality of life. Landlords need to make reasonable accommodations to account for these people that have a disability. Now, let me say, and I'm going to go on record since we're recording this, I have not in 20 years seen any what I would call blatant discrimination to the point where someone says, you know, we're not selling to that person. A lot of it comes in from either ignorance or very subtle kind of thing. Let me give you an example. A buddy of mine named David Troy owns a uh, high rise apartment building in Nashville, Tennessee, it's eight floors or nine floors. He was showing a house to uh, showing one of the apartments to a guy in a wheelchair. So he showed him the apartment on the first floor. And later the guys came back and filed a suit because he didn't show him the apartment on the eighth floor, which would have required the gentleman in the wheelchair to use the elevator. But David told me, now this is David telling me, Raymond, he literally couldn't reach the button while sitting in a wheelchair. He couldn't reach the button on the eighth floor. He couldn't have got there. So I didn't show it to him. I was just, I thought I was helping him. That turned into a discrimination case. All right. It wasn't that I don't think David didn't want to rent the property. Obviously, he had vacancies. But it was, he thought he was helping the guy by not showing it. And it turned around and bit him in the butt. So the key takeaway is you've got to treat them all equal and do the same thing for everybody all the time. Because the second you fail to do something like that is when it's going to jump up and somebody's going to say, hey, wait a minute, you discriminated on me based upon a disability or my race or my religion or any of those. So you've got to be real careful about it. Okay. Now, there are some exemptions, and we touched on them earlier. For every one of the protected classes, there is an exemption that allows you to, quote, unquote, navigate around that protected class, except race. Since race was the initial one that we started with, there is never an exception for race, all right? And we talked yesterday, the gentleman in the wheelchair that comes to you and says, oh, I wanna live in your uh, house, and you say, I can't afford to build the ramp and lower the, you have an economic burden that could, in theory, take you out of modifying the house, that could be an exemption. Now, if they remove that exemption, then you can't discriminate, obviously. So if he comes in and says, hey, I'll pay for the ramp, I'll pay for the grab bars in the bathroom, then you would say, okay, then go ahead, all right? Another good example, what happens if a pregnant lady comes in with four children to your two bedroom apartment and you say, I can't rent to you, you have too many kids. That sounds like a violation based on the family status. However, there is a health and safety law that says you can only put two people per bedroom on average 
and it supersedes this because it's a life-saving thing, she literally has too many people to put in a two-bedroom house. Five people can't go in a two-bedroom house. So there's an exemption there around the familial status. Sorry, too many tricycle motors. You guys know what a tricycle motor is, don't you? No? It's a little kid. Okay, never mind. Maybe that's just me. Over on page 351 are some more exemptions I want to look at. Owner-occupied buildings with no more than four units. Owner-occupied. So if there's a four-unit, a quad, and the owner lives in one of them, it potentially is possible that that property could be exempt from fair housing because it's owner occupied. Single family homes sold or rented without the use of a realtor. The second you guys get involved, you are supposed to be the professional that would tell your client, dude, you can't do that. So if they sell for sale by owner, potentially, because there's no agent involved, potentially they could get around the fair housing. All right. And then the third one says, I love this. One. I'm going to read it to you. Housings operated by organizations and private clubs that limit occupancy to members. Clear as mud, right? Got it? Do we need to just go on or should we talk about it? Okay, what this is saying is, yeah, you guys know what the Fraternal Order of Eagles is? The FOE? It is a social club. club. It's usually old fat dudes hanging around, all right? It's like the VFW or the Elks Lodge or the Moose Lodge or anything like that. Let's say the Fraternal Order of Eagles owns a property. They can literally say, we are only going to sell it to another FOE member. As long as joining the FOE is not discriminatory in nature. They can literally say, hey, Sarah, do you want to buy this house? Sorry, we only sell it to other FOE members. Go join the FOE and we'll sell it to you. Because joining the FOE does not discriminate based on race, color, religion, national origin, sex, familiar status, or disability. But for example, the Girl Scouts is a, another example. The Girl Scouts could not do this because you can't be a male and join the Girl Scouts. That is a discrimination based on sex. So the Girl Scouts don't get this exemption because you can't just go join the Girl Scouts. I couldn't join the Girl Scouts, but I can join the FOE tomorrow if I wanted to. So if it's a private club, they can limit their sales to other club members as long as being a member of the club isn't discriminatory in nature. All right. Are we cool so far? All right. You guys all look excited today. It's a beautiful day. All right. Now, there are some other exemptions that could potentially play out in here. The next set of bullet points says homes owned by an owner that does not own more than three homes concurrently who would own more than three single family homes at the same time an investor an investor exactly and as an investor if you're making a living renting houses you better damn well know the laws so what this is saying is if it's a person who's not an investor Maybe they aren't as qualified or as knowledgeable. They potentially have a little.